two highly controversial papers came out decades ago. Earth's Shifting Crust by Charles Hapgood came out in 1959. And it was followed by The Path of the Poles in 1970. Both of them were poo-pooed as pseudoscience because they described crustal slip and the slipping of the crust of Earth. Similar to this mock-up we're showing you here. Where something happens in the mantle that the hard crust on Earth, because of centripetal force, is able to decouple from the asthenosphere, the outer core and the inner core, and slide around the planet. Now this seem, may seem like pseudoscience or science fiction, and that's in fact what they thought back when Hapgood published Earth's Shifting Crust. We're going to leave you the free PDF to the entire initial copy, as well as the 1970 The Path of the Poles, where you can simply just shift, click the pages, and read the book. It's that beautiful. Now, Earth's shifting crust was bastardized because at that time the CIA didn't want this information to get out. And Charles Hapgood was brought on to force as one of the first central intelligence agents. And after the fact, he published The Path of the Poles which is to poo-poo his initial concept in global crustal displacement. But now a new paper coming out in the Journal of Scientific Exploration towards a new theory of Earth's crustal displacement. Well, our minds were blown. In fact, it's taken a quite a while for this paper to get published, three years. It was submitted July of 2019, accepted a year later in February of 2020, and and just published May 22nd of this year. And in the paper, it highlights short-term reversals of Earth's geomagnetic field. And they may unlock the crust to allow tidal forces to move in the same way that the oceans do. Just like Hapgood said. Six decades ago. Now, this is the current position of the Earth, but what were to happen if something were to uncouple the crust from the inner portions of the Earth? Well, it would start to slide. The inner portions of the Earth would continue to move while the crust slips, just like it's falling here. And the continental crust would be the one to determine where it slips, and the continents would move towards the equator. That's the hypothesis because heavy things would move towards the equatorial bulge. Now, is this even possible? Did the Earth have a different equator than the one we have today? Let's take a look at this video. So what this video shows is that many, if not all of the important megalithic unexplained sites like the Great Pyramids at Giza, all lie on a single latitude that you could recreate. But this would only occur if you shifted the crust of the earth, where places like the Great Pyramids of Giza Parasopolis, Angkor Wat, and many other sites are on this ancient equator. Mohenjo-Daro, and many others. In fact, all of the sites that mathematically record things like the Earth's 
distance to the sun, the precession of the equinoxes, and other advanced mathematical calculations, all on this ancient equator, which can only exist if the crust had slipped 30 degrees. And this includes Anatium Island, an Easter Island in the middle of the Pacific, where on Easter Island, they claim that the Moai were carved just in the last 2,000 years. All of this is absolute nonsense, in my opinion, and many others. There's the Nazca lines. These are all on a particular ancient ley line, which, according to many, would have been an equator at one point in the past. And this is right, passes right by Machu Picchu. Now, here are some of the megaliths in the Pacific Islands that you've probably never seen. Unexplained, clearly cast from a cement-like material with some sort of attachment points here, just like the other megaliths worldwide. Now, was Hapgood just a hack? Or was he a genius? because the foreword in his initial book was by Albert Einstein. And did it only take 11 years for The Path of the Pole to be published to correct or to re-educate the public on what, how stupid Hapgood actually was? <laughs> well, we did a wonderful video April 5th of 2009 on the subject. And then, actually, no, it was December 16th of 2019. But we're showing the same global crustal displacement illustration that we just showed you earlier. And I implore you all to go watch this video, which we'll share links below for, which is an expose on Charles Hutchins Hapgood, his crustal slip hypothesis and the cosmic cover-up connection. We'll give you a little teaser. You're looking at a simulation of crustal slip. Now the reason we're beginning with this is because tonight we're going to discuss Charles Hutchinson Hapgood, an American college professor and author who became one of the best known advocates for the pseudo-archaeological claim of rapid and recent pole shift with catastrophic results the crustal slip hypothesis. Now this illustration may be fanciful, but it may also be factual. Not in the sense that you just viewed, and we will get to that. But let's talk about who the person Charles Hutchinson Hapgood was. Okay, that looks like a great video. So we're just going to leave the links below to that. And you can go check it out on your own time. Now, one of the big breakthroughs we're going to bring to you in this multi-part series is the introduction to a very little known YouTuber called Mario Buildreps. And... We just missed an opportunity with Mario to do an amazing interview, but we just lost touch. And so in the coming days, there will be an interview with Mario and his Antiquity Reborn website and Mario Buildrep's YouTube channel. He's done extensive work on why the orientation of pyramids correlates with ice ages and crustal slip and in fact has done a very intensive investigation on the positions of the foundations of these megalithic structures. And his orientation patterns of 1,200 important ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world appear to correlate one-on-one -on -one with temperature changes of the last series of glacial cycles. 
He's talking about the ice core data, the epica data, the GISP-2 data. The foundations of ancient monuments were originally hundreds of thousands of years old, and some are as old as Homo sapiens itself. In fact, Mario claims that in the last 400,000 years, there have been four periods of rebuilding, just like we claim. And Mario has the same hypothesis that we do. That the major crustal slips happen every 100,000 years. And the last one is over. And there's nothing to worry about for another 83,000 years or so. But it's up to you to make your own decisions. If you think the global crustal displacement theory happens, let's say, every 26,000 years or just every 104,000 years. Now, as a geologist, I can tell you there is no geologic evidence of anything of this magnitude happening recently at all. It would be very evident on the surface of the Earth, in the rock record, or in some totally insane depositional environments that we actually can capture. Now, what we do have is some unique things happening about 12,900 years ago up in the Arctic. And that's where they're excavating all the mammoths and all the Ice Age animals and bones. But a crustal slip of this magnitude that happens every 26,000 years or even 104,000 years would have a record on Earth. And... People like Doug Vogt have some pretty compelling evidence of a global washover. It's anyone's guess at this point who has the actual information. So we want to detail it all. We want to report it all to you as it becomes available. So this is just a touch base of the Earth's shifting crust in a new paper that's coming out that we will go over in complete tooth and nail, word by word, in an upcoming podcast. Well, that will take quite some time. 16 pages of text. You're going to love it. What's actually happening and what are we waiting for? Check out all the links below. And stay tuned for the interview with Mario Bildreps, who's done all the footwork for the last decade on correlating these pole positions. And that's boom. New papers coming out that may prove that crustal slip is actually occurring, as well as the work from Mario Bildreps. Well, and we also believe that it is possible. So stay tuned for the next boom. We love you. Mm. Part two with Mario Bildreps coming soon. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Share this video. We love you.